can hear me but not see me, so you are not crazy. <laughs> I've got uh, the mic enabled here, but that's all you're going to see because I am the facilitator for today's event. Uh, our main guest is Megan here, which I will present in a few seconds. Um, but uh, before we get into today's webinar, which is all about going deeper with Energy Star Portfolio uh, Manager to get the most insight out of your building energy data and the analysis software, uh, I want to make sure that we go through a few uh, housekeeping items. So uh, today's webinar will be 90 minutes, including some time that we have reserved for uh, Q&A at the end. Um, we are recording the session and both the recording and the presentation materials will be posted to the Save on Energy Training and Support webpage. Uh, links will be included in a follow-up email as well that you'll receive from us. And uh, at the end of the session, we've got this Q&A period that is reserved, which will give you an opportunity to ask any questions that you may have. Uh, we encourage you to come on camera if you'd like and ask your question, or you can always uh, raise questions at any time uh, during uh, the presentation using the Q&A feature found at the top of the screen. Throughout the presentation, we will ask that you keep your microphones off to minimize the background noise, which we uh, I can see that most of us are uh, doing at the moment, so that's great. Um, if you do have a pressing question, please feel free to drop it in the Q&A box, or uh, you can use the hand raise feature, uh, and we'll stop periodically throughout the session to address them. So without further ado, it is with my pleasure to introduce uh, Megan Patvesquez of BPA. Hi all. So it's a pleasure to be presenting. This is uh, the second part of the Energy Star Portfolio Manager uh, by Save on Energy. So today we're going to go a little bit deeper into Energy Star Portfolio Manager and what we can do with it. I'll ask you in the meantime, while I do a little recap, to start logging into your Energy Star Portfolio Manager accounts if you can, because we're going. It'd be helpful for you to follow along with me um, as I start presenting the different items that we have. So on the agenda today, we have how we can adjust uh, the metric summary and edit pro editing property data. We're going to start with that. And please don't hesitate uh, to write the questions in the chat. I'll check back periodically after at every section here. So we have six different uh, chapters, if you would. At every end of that, those chapters, I'll check back in to see if you have any questions related to the subject that I just presented. Um, Without further ado, we'll continue. So to recap a little bit about Prop Energy Star Portfolio Manager, you have the summary tab where you can see all your information of your different uh, buildings. And how you access that, I will just pull that up for you guys, is that if you go into Energy Star Portfolio Manager, you click on your building, you can then access the summary tab and all the other seven detail tabs. Sorry, one second. And then once you go into the detail tabs, you can see various information, such as what you've input for your basic information, your ground floor square area, and all that other stuff. We're going to be using these tabs a lot today. And when you get into the energy and water tabs, you can edit a lot of information here. You can add meters, you can enter your bills, you can change meter selection se selections. Uh, you can obviously download some different reports, you can export the data, and you can download your annual totals uh, for your both your electric, depending what kind of meters you have, whether it's electric or gas or chilled water, you can download all that by into an Excel spreadsheet. So I'm going kind of quickly here because again, this is a little bit of a recap of what we covered uh, in the first presentation. Now that you have all this, like, you know how to manage and move around uh, Energy Star Portfolio Manager, how do you go through with inputting metrics summaries or building type different types of charts? And how do you edit your property data if you've input the wrong kind of properties? So let's go into that in a little bit more detail. One second, sorry, I have something else that popped up. Um, you can customize information uh, that is presented in the summary metric tabs by changing the metrics uh, in two places. So you have one place 
on a chart where it says change metrics, I hope you can see my mouse, and another one in the top uh, right hand corner where you can change the metrics. And this here is what where you can sort of customize the different type of views of what you want to see. You can change if you want to sort of track and see your energy star score. Do you want to see your source energy use intensity, your site energy use intensity? You have a, the whole list here that you would be able to display. But if you want to be able to display this kind of data, you need to have at least 12 months of consecutive data already input into your Energy Star Portfolio Manager building. So you need to have 12 months of metered data at a minimum. If you wanted to change the metrics uh, in the box a little here, so if you don't want to see these metrics here, you can uh, go through and on the little edits top button here, you can do change metrics. And this has dozens of different types of building details uh, that you can select. So I think it's many to 100 types of different details that you can select and have as a metric summary, uh, as an input sort of to see. But you can only select a maximum of seven items at a time. So if you want to change what's currently being presented, you'd have to unselect some different options. So if you didn't really care about your site energy use intensity, you could unselect that and instead go in and select maybe your data accuracy or your water performance metrics. Uh, if you ever wanted to get a full idea of what like metrics your building can give, you can download a full list of the information and metrics into an Excel, into an Excel spreadsheet format. Again, uh, I would like it if you guys can follow along. So if I'm going too fast, don't hesitate to write in the chat or raise a hand and uh, Annabelle will tell me. Um, to edit information of your properties. This is very useful um, when you maybe you input something wrong or you have to edit a certain type of, like, of property use details. Uh, to do so, again, you have to go into your property and to, do, to get into your property, you have to first select it. So if you don't know, again, go on my portfolio, click on the top, uh, the tab on the top left, select your property. Once you're in the portfolio, you have to select, you have seven different tabs on the bottom and there's different areas that you can edit property details. To edit the basic information, Go into the details tab and you'll have a basic information uh, box right here. There you can click on edits and you can sort of edit maybe what your ground floor uh, area uh, is. If you decided to sell a portion of your building and suddenly your building maybe have, has been reduced or you say your occupancy rate has changed. If not, there is a little edit button at the top right next to the street address that you can also use. Um, when you go into the edit property base, like just editing the basic information, uh, you can edit the location of your building. So say you put in the wrong street address, you can correct it, say you put in the wrong state or, uh, sorry, the state, the wrong province. Uh, say you didn't put Ontario, you decide to put Quebec. You can come back and edit it. Same thing with the postal code. This will help, uh, whoops, sorry, I didn't expect it. This will impact your weather data so when you change the where your property is located. So that might help or not help your energy star score. The only thing that you cannot change uh, in the basic information is you can't change the country. Uh, once you've already selected and created the property, you cannot go back and edit the, the country anymore. When you go into the property use details, that's where you can edit a little bit more information. You can edit when the year was built. Again, this is approximative. If you don't know it, it's fine. Um, you can edit the gross floor area, uh, different other things you can edit, such as occupancy. Uh, this is more the basic information, so it won't be like specific uh, details of, say, an office building. This is very basic, uh, high-level information. And again, just to show you as we go along, I am in my sample multifamily building. I can go into the details tab. I can either click on edit here or edit above, and it will bring me to the other tab where I can again change the address information or I can change the property details. Uh, I can also change if there's uh, maybe one building or more than one building on my property as well. I hadn't covered that. Once you've done all that, you just have to click on update property for it to be saved and updated. Second. Sorry. Okay. 
Yes, this is where we are. Um, you can also in the detail tab edit your property IDs. So if you have different IDs that you would need to provide, you can edit it here in the just underneath your basic information. You can designate a service or product provider. This normally means that uh, you would have to have whether if your data of your property is being maintained by a service or product provider, you can sort of define them here. You can delete this property. It's permanent, so once you do it, you cannot undo it. Uh, just keep that in mind. You can choose to add a different type of property use to your property. So say your office building has now become partially vacant. Maybe you want to start adding that type of information in and recording that. And this is where you could start adding another type of use into your building. We'll go into that uh, very shortly about why you would want to do that. And you have the action of editing building use details here. Uh, you would just have to do a click down on the I want to uh, drop down menu there. Again, we'll go into detail about that a little bit later. And that would be useful, for example, like the example given here would be useful if you wanted to edit the number of workers that you have on site or the number of hours that your building functions, your operating hours, if you would. So different things like that. So why would you want to update your information? Well, you can get a, it helps update and keep up to date your ENERGY STAR score, and it will help impact your time-weighted matrix. Metrics, not matrix. Uh, when would you want to update it? it? They've given a couple of examples here, so I've given a couple of examples here, but you would want to sort of update it when you have a change in vocation of your building. So say your office building becomes a data center or something, well, it shouldn't, it's not going to be uh, fairly compared to other office buildings anymore. Data centers have a larger energy consumption, so maybe you want to update the vocation of your building. Maybe your number of weekly operating hours has changed. Uh, maybe the number of workers on your main shift has changed, so you would want to update those kind of that kind of information. Uh, all these kind of things that I'm mentioning, uh, these criteria that I'm mentioning, they might have an impact on your energy star score. To know if they would or wouldn't, you can always click on the little arrow next to your building use, um, next to the building, what the title building use, and it'll show the list of criteria that is related to the energy star score. And again, if you have a little blue star, that will impact your energy star score. So this is why or like when you would want to sort of update your information. And I do want to very mention like mention that if you end up with a vacant space, maybe larger than 10% of your gross floor area, that's maybe when you'd want to update um, your building end uses, if you would. You can also correct or update your property use details. So this is to see what was previously entered, but if you need to edit it, you can go and click down on the drop down menu and it will go into your edit use details. This will bring you to another page. And in this page, you can edit every one of the components that is listed here. So you can edit the number of workers on your main shift, uh, number of computers, like I'm using an office as an example, but this will vary per property type as well. And if you do any edit, if you want to edit on anything, all you have to do is double click on the value or double click on the dates. And it's you can enter annually the number that has been updated to. Afterwards, you would click on Save Corrections to uh, save the updated values. And one second. So yes, as I mentioned, once you get into your edit details, all you have to do is double click on the value that was entered. Uh, this would change the current value. Uh, this is good if you want to edit it because it was wrongly entered or uh, it's it was uh, like incorrectly entered. If you wanted to enter new data because your occupancy rate has changed, but previously it was correct, what you can do is add a new set of data. And this will call, you can do that by clicking on add a new row or to update with new information. So Energy Star will now take this new information and use that uh, for your calculations, but it won't penalize, it won't deletes and overwrites the old information that you had previously. And this can really help can, like when, yep. Uh, so sorry, I just have a question in the chat here. Mm -hmm. uh, someone is asking, we've got a few buildings built in phases. Uh, for example, 1974, 84, 99. Uh, how do you define the year in the portfolio? That is very fair. 
I believe that the year you enter it as like, enter a date. I don't believe it has any impact on your energy star score at the end of the date. The the year it's just a, a good to know and a nice to have, but it won't enter your energy star score. I'd maybe suggest you start with the oldest date um, in that case, but it won't impact your energy star score at the end of the day. So. That's how I'd go about it. If you're unsure, you can always send a message to the Energy Star platform. They can maybe give you a little bit more advice in that case. But again, as it has no impact on your Energy Star score, I'd say pick either the first date uh, in that case. I hope that made sense. And uh, to Terry, yes, you will be receiving a copy of this presentation at the end, so you'll be able to follow along with it um, later on. Perfect. So don't hesitate to stop me again. I'm always here to answer your questions. Uh, again, if you want to add more information, I just have to click on add a new row. And there is always the reminder at the top when you're changing your information of why you would want to do that. Um, so this reminder here is like I've highlighted it in a box and why you wouldn't maybe want to do it in other cases. So you like, I would suggest that you read this little text here, you just, you just go through every time you say, hey, maybe I'll update the information. My uh, gross floor area of my property has changed. But if it's not more than 25%, if your new property type that you want to add in, your vacant property type is not maybe more, I had said 10, but here Energy Star says 25% of your gross floor, gross floor area, then maybe don't include it. It's too small of a detail to be included uh, to impact your energy star score and you're going to be detailing too much at that point and it would be a lot more to manage maybe um i want to just mention the last point here it says if the operating hours differ by more than 10 hours for the main property use so they mean 10 hours per week from the main property use so you will have a certain amount of hours that you have per week if it differs by 10 that's when you would maybe want to uh, change your property type another time like we had i had a question one time someone had a building that was seasonal so it was closed down in the summer and it was open in the winter you would probably have to change it uh, in those cases as well uh, we're using an example so this is if you want to add another type of property use how you would go about doing it rather than editing it is you would have to go and click on the drop down menu on the top select the type of property use you wanted to add and then click on add once you click on that, it'll open a pop-up here, and this is where you can enter a custom namespace. So it doesn't have to be just Office One or Veterinary Office. You can name it something uh, to that will be easily identifiable to you or your uh, team that manages the building. So in this case, there's no such thing as a vacant space, but like it'd be good to, this is using an office building. So they decide to add another type of use, which is also an office use. But this office has now become vacant. So they just listed it as vacant space for their knowledge. But to consider that it's vacant, they decide to say the gross floor, well, that we'll get back to, but the, the weekly operating hours, the number of workers on the shift and the number of computers are all zero because there's nobody in the building at this time. It's still defined as an office building. So the property use detail still uses the same criteria as the office use building, but they've only put zero in for vacant office use spaces. Once that's done, you can click on save use to uh, save the modification. When you're updating the property use details, this is the reason why I script over their gross floor areas that you need to properly update uh, your gross floor, your, your floor area of your new property type, which is now a vacant space. So in this example, we have an updated value of 500 uh, square meters. Always be aware of what uh, unit you're using because that can impact you. Um, so in this case, they have 5,000 square meters for the vacant space and then the rest of the operating hours, sorry, they created, let me go back. Previously, there was no vacant space. So they're defining a new property type. And in this property type, there's no square meters associated to the vacant space. And there's also, because it's a vacant space, no weekly operating hours, no num workers on the shift and all that. Now, because they want to define a new vacant space and the start date of this vacant, the vacant space, this is where they're going to update the value. 
and update certain parameters on the value. So the weekly operating hours and number of computers, this all remains the same, but they're going to update the vacant space from zero square meters to 5,000 square meters. And you can also update the date of the change so that Energy Star can record this value and be like, okay, well, at this date, then this amount of square footage no longer has any weekly operating hours, any workers, any type of computers, and any needs for being heated. Afterwards, you can save this update. However, once you've done that, you have to also go back into your office space and update those values as well. So the office space that is occupied, you would have to come back and edit those values as well. So for example, the weekly operating hours you might and the rest of the workers and all that on the shift, those probably do not need to be updated, but the area, the total area of the building in our example was 25,000 square meters, a little bit over that, minus your 5,000 meters squared. Um, from your vacant space. So you'd have to update your gross floor area of your office space to 20,000 meters uh, squared. You also have to make sure the date change that you're putting in is identical to the one that you've entered into your vacant space. So the one that you've entered here, make sure those dates are the same. Afterwards, you can click on save updates to update the information. And it's very important to make sure that the sum of the floor area, so the sum of your you occupied office space and your inoccupied office space matches your property's gross floor area that you are reporting. So here they are matching. And this is where we're going to see how the if you enter the wrong kind of information, you've entered the wrong kind of square footage. This is where the data quality checker will become very useful because it'll alert you that there's something wrong with what you've entered. Uh, is there any questions at this point? I'm, I can't read the chat, yes. Annabelle. There is? Okay. I'm, yes, good timing. <laughs> I've got someone here asking, should we modify the area uh, GFA if mm -hmm. the unoccupied space is still using the conditioned area? I would need Maybe. a better, I would need a, a I'm not a more context. A bit more context <laughs> for that. If... Okay, Sridhar, if you want to add to your or, question. Um, where is maybe. is it in the chat? Should we it's in the, the Q and A section. Q &As. The unoccupied space is still using the conditioned area. Yes, I'm going to say yes uh, if I understood this question correctly, because you still don't have workers that are going to be in those spaces, and you still might not have the computers that are in those spaces. Like I'm using again an office example. Multi-res is going to have different criteria. Uh, even though you're still heating and cooling that area, you will not have loads in that area. You won't have maybe your lighting loads as much, or your equipment loads, or your people that are in that area. So yes, still update uh, and modify your ground floor area if the unoccupied space is still using conditioned uh, in a heated and cooled environment. If that makes sense, don't hesitate to stop me or ask me the question again. I can reiterate or uh, try to explain it a little bit better if not. But if that's all for now, then I will continue. Give me one second. There we go. Sorry. All right. So as I was saying, um, um, Megan? Mm -hmm. Right, right before we jump in, I've got Sridhar with uh, the last question that we had with the hand mm -hmm. raised. So maybe there's a bit of context that we're going to add here before we okay. move on. Perfect. Hi, Sridhar. Yeah, thank you. This one, my question is about, let us say, it has 10,000 square meter uh, building space condition. And now, so let us say 5,000 square meters of space, 50% uh, of the building space is unoccupied but we have a single zone heating system, which is uh, heating entire building. But yeah, here we are wasting the energy, right? So if we modify the area to 5,000 square meter, uh, are we, can we feel that we are reporting correctly? Yeah, in that case you can, well, you would have to, I would still keep your property area as your 10,000 because that hasn't changed. You haven't sold half your property. Um, but I would then modify it. I would do an added another type of use. Let me go back. I don't know if you can still see my screen. I'd still go to add another type of use and I would still add the vacant space because even though it's one central heating plant and all that, it, you don't have people that are on site in that case. And it will consider that 
and the energy star score. Yeah, so yeah, it, it should be entered as vacant space and it will be okay. It will yeah, be I'm... heating and cooling the space, but however, other loads may not be there, persons or computer load. Exactly. But we still be using the heating and cooling energy. Yeah. Exactly. And I think uh, for certain energy star scores, if you end up with too much of a vacant space, then they you might not be qualifiable for certain. Uh, I, I'm, I'm using the 5,000 versus a 10,000 square meter uh, building. Like maybe ha if half your building is unoccupied, you might not qualify for an energy star score. So that, that's where energy star will, will sort of calculate and be like, oh, okay, well, now you can't, cal you can't qualify, but when you get a tenant, maybe you could, if that makes sense. Okay. And uh, uh, here, this vacant space, how uh, is uh, affecting the energy star score, right? Yeah, so you can, the what it will affect in the energy star score are the criteria that you've entered here. So the little stars here, that's what will start impacting the score. And this score is based on a percentage, like where they compare it to other like Enercan buildings that they've analyzed all across Canada. And okay, well, maybe if you have twice the amount of computers in your uh, building for your square footage, like you might have a lower energy star score, things like that. Okay, understood. Thank you very much for the clarification. No problem. So I will continue uh, with the data quality checker. I might use an example when I, by going into the, I lost sight of the presentation. Okay, we're back. So if you see, a little exclamation points. It really, what it does for you is that it's Energy Star is alerting that you have a problem with your data. You have a problem with something that you just entered. It will alert it from the very like summary tab at the very top. So at the very beginning, it'll say, "Hey, there's something wrong here," and from there, it will alert like two different or multiple different things that you might have going on there. Uh, when you have an issue, what you can do is you can always click on the little exclamation mark and there you can open up and see what's wrong with your data that you've entered and this example we have that the property ground the square the property area is around 25,000 square meters but we've only reported 24 because we've entered the vacancy use space and we haven't updated or properly updated maybe the occupied office space so it's a very easy tool that can help you sort of pinpoint when things are going wrong. All you have to do is find the little exclamation point and click on it for it to uh, explain to you what is going wrong. Uh, so this is another type of example. Uh, this is an example where you have an error with what was entered into your energy uh, bills or something. And here, for example, you have your different meters that are being listed, but something is wrong with your district chilled water. And it, it's a very easy tool to to sort of alert. So you can see it from the, like all your tabs. You see, oh, something's wrong with my energy. Okay, let me go take a look. Oh, something's wrong with my main shield water meter. Well, what is it? You click on the little um, exclamation point, and in here it'll again it'll tell you what's wrong with it. It'll say, okay, well, in this case you have two sets of bills that are overlapping each other, which it can't happen. And either something maybe has been entered incorrectly, maybe the dates of the month and the day were reversed, or something else. Uh, so it'll give you at least an idea of where the problem is uh, and specifically which even two dates aren't matching and why or are matching and shouldn't. So what you can do is always follow the path of these little exclamation points and correct what the error is being listed. Uh, portfolio manager can't do this on its own, so you do need to sort of step in and correct this. You can also use the data data quality checker tool. This can be found in the summary tab of your building and it'll check per building. So if you have multiple buildings, you have to go to each um, building and then go into the summary tab. And then afterwards, there is, after all your metrics summary at the bottom, there's a data quality checker. And something I really do want to highlight that it checks your data for a 12 month uh, period. And in the next slide, I'll show you a little bit of how it works. Um, so here you would be able to define your 12 month period. If not, it's going to use the most recent 12 month period. If you don't have 12 months of data, the data quality checker can't be run. You are going to select the dates 
the end date of your 12 month period. So in this case, if you wanted to do all the year of 2018, you would have selected December 31st, 2018. Uh, and then the data, the you click on the checker, the rerun checker, and you can scan your property data and it will return different results. If you get a little thumbs up, you have no problems with your data. If you have different alerts that pop up, that means there are two different types of alerts you can get. One is with the red exclamation point and the little like octagonal stop sign looking thing. This will indicate that you're missing data and some metrics can't be calculated because of it, or so there's corrupted, or maybe you're overlapping data, and this needs to be resolved as soon as possible. Other word, other ones like this is just an indication that maybe your building is a bit abnormal versus, say, other office type of buildings. If you have double the amount of computers, maybe you're consuming a lot more, and maybe it'll alert you that this is a little bit weird for this type of a building. And just to double check, is that really true? Is what was entered really true, or is it maybe an error? So. That's a little bit about the data quality checker, not uh, too in like detailed of a thing. It's very uh, a very powerful, a very useful tool. Uh, I'll do a little pause, Annabelle. Do we have any questions related to the data quality checker? So far, so good, Megan. Perfect. So I'll continue on to the third section of the report where uh, you can update data using the spreadsheet upload feature. This is a very powerful tool. And it's a tool that if you're not careful with what you enter, you can um, make a lot of errors. There are five section, five types of spreadsheet upload features. The first is to create a property. So you can create multiple properties with one spreadsheet. That can be very useful if you have, if you're managing over even just five properties or 20 properties. If you don't want to enter everything manually into Energy Star, you can use the spreadsheet upload feature. Um, all the rest of the spreadsheet uploads are dependent that you have a property created. So if you don't have a property created at this point and you want to go in and create meters, you, you can't. You'd have to create the property first or use either in Energy Star manually or using the spreadsheet upload feature. The rest are all dependent on it. So you have your create meters. And from after you've created meters, you can also have a spreadsheet where you can add consumption to meters. And after you've done that, you can use you have two other types of spreadsheets where you can edit different types of basic property information. So a little bit like what I was pre previously presenting uh, at the very beginning, you can edit your property information or you could use the spreadsheet upload. And if you have to massively upload a lot of details, then you can use that spreadsheet instead. And these two will then edit your property, what the details of your property. So a little bit of like the five types of spreadsheets and we'll go over when you use them and how they are functional and all that. So to create a property or to update multiple properties, this isn't in any property tab. This will be on your main uh, portfolio manager page. So you do have to go back to the My Portfolio. You'll have your list of all your properties. At the bottom, this is uh, the tools where you'll be able to edit or download or upload your, your spreadsheets. And that's what we are interested in. So what you can do is click on the upload and or update multiple properties and you'll be redirected to a new screen here. And this will, this will this will be the screen that will pop up. This section here is for uploading the spreadsheet. It's not to download the spreadsheet, but if you wanted to, we'll go actually next into the Thank next slide. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't sure if it was a question. Um, so if you wanted to download the first spreadsheet, uh, for adding multiple properties, you follow that path I had just mentioned. I'll, I'll show it again in Energy Star itself. And on the Add Properties, you can then click on the Add Property template. You're going to have to download this spreadsheet and save it to your desktop. And once you've done that, uh, when I downloaded it, you have to sort of click and say, yes, I want to edit the use details. Yes, I see the spreadsheet to save. It's just a thing that Excel does. And once you can, you can then start editing all the property information here. What I really do suggest is to carefully go through and read all the instructions, because if you upload the spreadsheets and there's errors or something, it won't properly upload. And the, these instructions are very clear of what to do and what's not to do. And don't try to edit anything in the spreadsheet. I really do avoid changing or adding columns or changing the format type. For example, here they're talking about numeric values um, should not have any 
kind of commas, or in French, we do spaces instead of commas. It really should just be a number listed as that. Same thing with dollar signs, just a number. So just to go through and read all the instructions when you download it. Before we get there, I just want to show you again where you can download it. And let me get that open. You go back to your home page in your My Portfolio. If you go down to the bottom, you have your Upload and or Update Multiple Properties. Click on that. This will open your new tab here. In your Add Properties, this is where you can download that Excel template. And you can see I've already downloaded it once, but like this is where you can open it, save it. I do suggest you go ahead and save it if you're going to use it. And let me get up the spreadsheet in itself. So this is the spreadsheet. It is maybe a little bit too large for you guys, um, especially for the because I'm going to be showing you the tabs. But if not, you can follow along with the uh, presentation. So again, you're going to have the first tab, which is the instructions. And this will very much list out what you need to do and what you should and shouldn't do. And to continue, there's a little bit of back and forth with this presentation. so. Just be a bit patient with me. When possible, uh, use the drop down menus when available. When you first look at the spreadsheet, it isn't apparent. You'd have to click cell by cell to see if you have a drop down menu or not. Um, like I previously mentioned, you really don't want to be making any changes to the format of the spreadsheet. So don't add a column. Don't go in and uh, add anything here. You have as many rows as you need. So you don't need to add any rows either. But if you did add a a row technically it wouldn't impact it, but still, just try not to add a column or a row. Um, if you're filling out any other tabs, so you have multiple tabs in the property spreadsheet, I do suggest you take the time to go through and download the spreadsheets and maybe follow along with me. Um, make sure to copy the property names exactly as you have entered them in the property in the first tab, the second tab here that says properties. Otherwise, it's going to create an error. So if you Write pro like your property name. Ha! You decide to add two spaces in between multi-res building. Uh, it's going to create an error because it's not going to be able to associate the different names to those the same property anymore. Uh, when you're filling in different fields, note that the only numbers that you should enter are numeric. Uh, don't add any formulas. Don't do one thousand plus one thousand. That it'll create an error. So just put in the value. Don't make any changes. And again, use the drop down menu. So I will go through the different tabs here. You have the properties tab, and this information is where you'll enter the most important part of your properties. I will try to get that back up in a second. But I did want to just mention the property ID tab. Uh, this is not required. None of the things in this tab are required to be filled out, but you can fill it out. Uh, so if you have a lead project and you have an idea associated to it, you can automatically put it in and it will be uploaded uh, into the building use uh, details. However, uh, I did wanted to note that there was an Ontario EWRB ID. However, when I downloaded the spreadsheet uh, to test it out, I think they removed that. So that's not there anymore. Uh, again, don't add it back in. You might just have to manually add it in in uh, Portfolio Manager. Oops, sorry, it's the wrong spreadsheet. Here we go. So here you have your property tab and we'll go over the different colors and what they mean, but it's pretty um, self-explanatory. If it's in green, it means it's required. It's it's written, written, written underneath. If it's in blue, it's optional. And dark blue like this, you can see there are certain criteria where you would need to, I'll zoom in, sorry. I assume that was a bit too small. Dark blue is where you'd have to sort of check where your it might be required or not required. Like if you are living outside of Canada or the United States, it's not required. Um, this one, it has a different definition. So just to follow along and sort of enter what you need. Uh, it's very basic information about your building and all the other uh, stuff. And for example, as I was saying before, the drop down menus, you can't see them. So I would do it, suggest go through and click cell by cell to sort of see if there are first, like for example, this one, any notes. Uh, associated to the cell. So when you click on the property name, it says that you have to make a unique name and it has to be maximum 80 characters. For example, this one, I can see there's a little drop down menu and this is where I go through and select it. There's going to be a comment that I'm going to mention a little bit later on in a slide here, but they grouped the um, United States 
states and the Canadian provinces together in one list. So CA is California, it's not Canada. Your Ontario is next to Oregon. And you just, just keep it in mind that they're all grouped into one big thing, which I we are not as Canadians maybe used to. We have a lot less uh, provinces than states. One second. Are you okay? Trying to. And yes, the property IDs, these are all optional. Your tab of US or Canadian federal property information, you really only fill this out if your building is related to a federal building. I am going to make the assumption that the majority of you might not be uh, federal property owners, but if you are, and you have a very specific question related to that, open up the spreadsheet, take a look, and don't hesitate to, to ask it. But if not, it's very self-explanatory uh, as well. There is a little sub note on parking because everything in the parking tab is required to be entered. So one note is if you have a sub meter for your parking, exclude the parking energy and the ground floor area from the total energy and the total ground floor area of the building. And if you cannot, you have to fill it, like if your parking lot is part of one meter with the rest of your building and it is included, then you have to fill in the parking tab. And here, um, in certain cases, you might not have an enclosed uh, parking garage. In those cases, you would have to write, say, zero, like I don't have an enclosed parking garage, but I do have an open parking lot, which is metered because I have lights on it and my lights are submetered with my building meter. I'm giving you an example there. Uh, when you again, so when you're not using a certain criteria, just put zero for the parking if applicable. Before you go to upload, make sure to double check your information. So if you do upload and there are errors and it manages to, to upload, but you by mistake entered the wrong building information, you've entered uh, 10,000 square feet instead of 10,000 square meters, well, you're going to have to manually go through or, and change all of this uh, manually for each building or go through and delete all the buildings and re-upload the spreadsheet. So it's something that you have to be a little bit thorough on yourself. Uh, check your units, check what you've entered and all that. To upload a spreadsheet, uh, what you have to do is you already have to have it saved on your computer. Go into that upload or update multiple properties tab that I had shown you before. Uh, so we had downloaded the properties template here, but now we're going to upload the spreadsheet in itself. And then you have to define what kind of a type of upload it would be. In this case, we're adding new properties. So the add new properties um, tab is what we're going to use. You select the file. You click on here, then it's here in French, but uh, it's going to be upload a file. And you click on that, you're going to select the file and then click on upload. There's a little warning, as mentioned, that this is a very powerful feature. There's a no undo button. We'll go into the warnings in a second. or a little bit later on. If you go to upload a property and it properly uploads and there's no problem, you're gonna see the little status button here. It's gonna be processed, it's gonna say uh, it's, it was a success. You can only upload one spreadsheet at a time. If there's an error with your property, it'll say why it failed. It'll give you a little X, it'll tell you it failed. And then you can click on the view errors to sort of see where and what's happening. Why is it failing? And here it even like defines which row and which tab and what uh, information is wrong and why why is there an error with your current upload. And so be very useful if, if for troubleshooting. Another thing too, once if your spreadsheet fails to upload, that means the properties haven't been created. So when you go to upload it again, you don't have to be worried. You're not making duplicate properties. You're not doubling up on the properties. However, if it does succeed and you've entered errors into here, again, because you've reused square meter, square feet instead of square meters, you'd have to manually go back and, and change that. So creating multiple meters. Uh, this 
will vary depending on there's no set templates the template is going to change depending on what you define as the meters that are in your building so if you only have electric meters and you don't have any gas then it'll only create a template that needs electric energy meters uh, to create that like you already have had to have created a new property or like your properties already had to have existed and you're going to now associate it, these meters to those properties in the same upload or update multiple properties Properties tab, you're going to have a section over here that says edit and manage information. And this is where you're going to create an upload template. You can click on this. And this custom upload template, this section here will be useful for those steps two to five that I had shown you before, where there's five reasons why you would use a spreadsheet upload. Well, the two to five is in this area that you would upload. So you can update meters, create meters, uh, add bills, update building information, things like that. So to create a custom upload template, you have the different steps here. First, you have to select which task you're performing. These are the steps two to five that I was mentioned before. You can, again, you can either add the meters or add bills. To be able to add bills, you already have to have meters that exist. So keep that in mind. To update building use details, you already had to have created the property. To edit basic information, again, you already have to create a property. So it's all a little bit intertwined. These two are intertwined together, and these two are intertwined to creating the property. You select the property that you want. Um, afterwards, you select the type of information that you would like to include in your meters. So what meters do you have on site? Do you have electric? Okay, if yes, then is it purchased from the grid? Most of you are. Uh, if you're from Toronto Hydro or anything else, unless you're solely like off the grid, maybe then you might use solar panels or wind turbines. These are the only other options they give you. But for I have a very thorough belief that all of you have electricity. So. You click on electricity, you can say purchase from the grid. You can also mention the number of meters that exist on your property if you have more than one. Um, natural gas, same thing. How many meters? You, if you have district chilled water uh, with, I think it's called N wave. Again, I'm not 100% sure. You can add that in as well. And again, so this is the custom report that you're going to start creating. Same thing for, this is just, I'm talking about energy, but you have the same thing for water meters. So you can also be tracking that. And you can also create a custom upload template for the water meters. Same thing for the waste and materials. Once you've selected everything, that's when you click on create and download template. Now I'll take a moment here, if I'm not taking too long, uh, to just show you again uh, the Energy Star portfolio. So again, you go into the upload. Once you've edited your and created your properties, you could have uploaded your property type here. So you go and add new properties, choose your file, click on upload, should upload. If you want to create your upload template for anything like the bills or the meters, updating data use or editing your information, you go create an upload template. You'll have a step-by-step -step process where you have to say what you wanted to do. In this case, I'm talking about meters. So I want to add meters to existing properties. I'll select the kind of property I want. I'll use my office building. Apply selection. If I'm going too fast, again, don't hesitate. Afterwards, you have to detail, OK, what do I want as a meter? I have electricity meters. I have a natural gas meter. I only will put one. I have a district chilled water. It's electric. I have district hot water, one. And then I can also say, OK, my water meters. Is it potable water? OK, is it indoor or outdoor? Those details that you must know already at that point. Then you can click on the create download template and that's where you will create your custom template in excel depending on what you have it reset the page but depending on what you had defined uh, previously defined there in the criteria here and for we'll get into that download template in a second this is just the same page so once you've created your adding meters uh, spreadsheet tips, again, make sure to save it uh, to your computer because it's going to not be saved if you just open it or be saved in your downloads. Uh, anything that is listed in gray in the spreadsheets is automatically calculated and created by Energy Star Portfolio Manager. So that office ID that you previously filled out, it this you cannot edit. Uh, just leave it as is. What you are going to edit is that you're going to input information that is required. It's going to be. It's going to say it's required. Uh, 
it's going to be in green and that's where you would input your information. There is always an instruction tab in every uh, spreadsheet that you do download. So it will change per download, uh, depending if you're changing a bill, adding a bill, adding a meter. It's going to have different instructions. Go through, read the instructions, fill in the spreadsheets. Um, you can take the time, fill it out. I want to just mention here, if it's bulk or metered, you would mostly use metered if you have regular bills from Toronto Hydro or Enbridge, I'm using them as an example, but you would use bulk if you have a delivery, such as if you're getting propane delivered to your building. Um, and you can choose if you want it to be included in your property metrics. Um, they give a very good example here. They say submeters should not be included in your property metrics. So that's when you would put no, but like your main meters would be included in your property metrics. Also be very careful with the dates. They do mention it here, uh, which type to use. This is the adding multiple bills section. So it's a little bit of the same thing. I do want to just show you the spreadsheets again, adding meters. So I had created an energy meter and I had created water meters. Like there's two different tabs here and my meters that I had created were my electric meter, my natural gas, my district hot water, and my district chilled water. Uh, again, here you would not change these IDs. And then you have descriptions here of what if you need to describe different things. If not, you do have what is required. So the meter name, the units, this is a drop down menu. So is your electricity in kilowatt hours is it in gigajoules is it in btu or something else and this is where you would define it a little bit more about the meters there same thing for the water um so take the time to go through it and read it it's the same information you would enter in energy star portfolio manager so it's not uh it's just listed more as a spreadsheet now there's the option after you've done and added all your meters. You can also add, uh, create a spreadsheet for if you want to add multiple bills. I'd say this is one of the most useful points of uh, the spreadsheets because bill data is what we have a lot of. Once you've created a property, you're not maybe going to create, if you have a lot of properties to create, it would make a difference. But if you have one property, maybe going through Energy Star Portfolio Manager and just creating it in there is better. But everyone's going to have multiple bills. And if you want to have, um, metrics and sort of benchmarking from Energy Star Portfolio Manager, you do need 12 months worth of data. So at a minimum, you will be uploading 12 bills either manually or you can use this create custom upload template. A little bit the same thing as the uh, creating a meter, you have to define what your template is. It's in the same section as the other ones I had shown you. So you go into the create custom upload template, but instead of saying add meters to existing properties, you're going to select on the add bills to existing meters. You're going to select what property again that you wanted to add. And from there, it's going to register, oh, well, this one has an electric meter, a natural gas meter, a district hot water and chilled water, because I previously defined that. And from there, you can sort of select, okay, well, I want to upload maybe just my electricity bill. So you don't select anything else. You only select electricity and you say, I have 12 months of data to upload. So write 12. If you have 13 months of data to upload, write 13. And then you can create your download template. Again, always read the instructions. That's the best thing, I, the best advice I can tell you is that they're very thorough in explaining uh, what to do. So go through, read the instructions. It's going to, the spreadsheet again is created on what you had previously selected. So these tabs here are going to be there or they're not going to be there if you didn't select gas and you didn't select water, for example, and you only selected electricity, this template won't exist. Make sure to save the spreadsheet to your desktop. Um, and then go through and start filling out the different information. So we have the example here where you have the meter IDs and everything in gray. This was already generated and this is pulling information from Energy Star Portfolio Manager. You shouldn't edit it. You will have the first line here 
uh, which will also be in gray if you had already previously made entries into Portfolio Manager. If you have no bills in Portfolio Manager, then it won't be in gray. But if you did, then it'll at least tell you, okay, well, your last bill was in January 11th, 2019. So you can start entering the bills after that. So don't change any of the values in gray. It will cause errors. Green is what's required, but you have to double check what you're entering. Try not to switch your numbers up. Try not to like, forget uh, the units. Uh, blue sections are optional if they're in cost or they are required if green energy is consumed. Uh, so if you have any solar panels or any um, wind turbines or things like that, then in that case, it would say it's required. Again, you can go through and always read the tabs. It's very self-explanatory and it, it tells you, okay, well, what is this column? This one's pre-filled. You don't have to touch it. This one's a start date. That's required. You do have to put something in. One thing to note is that you really want to make sure there's no gap uh, in the dates. So if your building is closed down and you have no consumption for your summer, or your winter, because uh, your building is only three seasons. Uh, what you can do is put in at least one bill date from the whole season that is closed for say November till March, and then put in zero as your consumption data. So it'll still have the bill dates, if you would, and you just have to sort of define that you have no consumption in that period, it was closed down. If you don't have dates that are there's a gap or there's an overlap, then it is going to cause an error. I've said it multiple times, but you always have to double check your information before uploading. Um, the When you upload, again, as I mentioned, you can't really undo this once it's been uploaded. And uh, if there's no errors in the upload and you've, again, wrong units or something, you have to go back and maybe edit all your bills that you have uploaded or delete all your bills that you've uploaded. So it's a, it's a manual removal that can take a lot of time if you're not uh, careful. If you choose not to do it uh, and you just re-upload it without deleting the old data, then it's just going to upload two sets of data for each month and that will cause you errors. You're not going to be able to get to your energy star score. A little note here is that if you have a lot of data that you're uploading in one shot and your spreadsheet is larger than two megabytes, um, it could take hours to upload and you'd be better splitting it into smaller spreadsheets. So maybe cut off your dates at certain times for your bills and say do it per season instead of one year if you have too many bills or you're trying to do three years worth of data, maybe just do it by year instead if it's over two megabytes. It can take many hours to process and you're not able to upload any other sp spreadsheet while one spreadsheet is being processed, you always have to make sure your, your spreadsheet is in a Microsoft Excel format. Don't change it to a CSV. Don't change it to a macro. Um, just keep it as what the same thing is, what it was downloaded. So that's detailed information about the spreadsheets. Uh, they're a very powerful upload tool. Do you have any questions on that? I'll assume it's a no. I can't see the chat, so. We are we are good for now. We've got a few questions that we can keep for the end. Mm. Okay, that's perfect. So the next part is uh, sharing property data. And uh, why would you want to do that? Well, we'll see very soon. So why share? property data with other users, well, it allows you to sort of, how, sorry, why do you want to share data with other users is that if you want to both have, have two accounts working on the same building, like two different Energy Star accounts that have access to the one building, that's a very useful tool to have is to share properties. Uh, maybe you want to just show the properties off to different shareholders. You want to show share with them uh, the consumption per month and they want to maybe the building owner wants to see the consumption per month. They're not going to edit anything in that case they're only going to review. Maybe that's a great way for them to access the property. Um, it really like this sharing property feature really allows you to manage the information that you want to share with other people without having to share your login information. So that is very key. Um, it can You can sort of define what level of access the users will be able to get on your buildings. Uh, 
so it's great with external consultants, shareholders. Maybe you have two people working on some building, a little bit uh, of the same thing. So once you've shared the property with your building, with your with your friend or with your coworker, your stakeholders, your building owner, they will be able to see their property on their homepage. So I'll show you that in a second. To be able to add a con to, to share a property, you first have to have a, a contact. And to do that, you need to request, do the add contact request. To get to that page, uh, you can access it from any part in the Energy Start Portfolio Manager. You just have to scroll up to the top and next to the help and sign out, there's contacts. You can click on that. And from there, it'll bring you to the My Contacts page. Uh, if you haven't added anyone yet, that means that this area is going to be completely empty. Um, and there is going to be an option to search for new contacts or add a new contact, which will pop up another type of pop-up page where you can start searching for the contact in Portfolio Manager. Uh, you can look up their name, organization, uh, if not, if you know their username, for example, mine for this test was a custom username. So you can look up that custom username. If not, you can look it up by their email and do a search. You can also create uh, a new contact. Uh, once you have requested to add someone, they have to go through and first accept it for you to before you can even start sharing any information. You just both of you have to say yes, I want to be contacts uh, before you start sharing. And I do want to make a little side note because I realized this recently. There was a couple issues. Is that you and your page? So again, I want to just show you where you can go in the contacts page. You click here, and from there you can add a new contact or connection. I decided to re-add myself on a uh, tester account. So when you click on the add new contacts connections, you can search by username and all that, uh, or by email and do the search. If not, you can sort of create a, con a portfolio manager user for them and send it on their way and they'll get the information code. Now, I did want to mention the contact that you're trying to add, if they already have an account in their account, they need to have, uh, where is that? In their preferences, they have to have agreed to, where is it? Sorry. Sharing. Do you want your user here? To add another contact, that other contact has to be either searchable by other portfolio manager users. So if you want to search by username or by email. So to do that, you have to make sure that your username is shareable here as well. So um, mine, for example, this tester account is not shareable, so you wouldn't be able to find this tester account. However, you would be able to find my uh, other tester account, which is the same username, but with a two at the end. So just be careful of that. I realized that recently that you can't find someone if they don't want to be found. Let me get back to you. There we go. Once the request is sent, the other person should receive a notification and you have, you'll get a little bubble at the top. It'll say a one or a two, depending on the number of notifications you're getting or requests you're getting. And your contact that you want to add will have to go into notifications and either go into incoming requests and accept the, the request to contact, or you can also go into your notifications and see, hey, has he, has my contact, uh, Marc Antoine, decided to accept my request to share property information. So once you have a contact, now you can go into using the sharing section. So this is at the top part of the page. Normally we've always been working so far in the My Portfolio page. Right beside it is sharing. Um, you click on the sharing tab and from there you can share or add access to a property. You This tab here is very useful if you have a provider that could give you automatic access to your build data. However, I don't think that's set up in Ontario just yet. It's supposed to be set up in November, and I'm assuming that once it's set up, they will do a, a presentation on how to uh, set up web services. But for now, we're gonna focus on sharing or editing access to a property. And 
your contacts must accept their accept the request to see pro the properties on uh, their account. When you get into the sharing, you can sort of define the level of access that you want to give to someone. You can maybe just give them a read only access. Uh, let me go back. So once you've clicked on the share or edit access to the property, you're going to open up this new kind of a tab that pops up and you can select multiple properties or you can just do one property at a time. You can select which people are allowed to have the access to the accounts and then you're going to choose what kind of permissions are you going to give them access to? Are they only going to be able to read? Will they have full access? Do you want to give them a custom type of access? And this is uh, if you click on the custom access that will open up a new bubble, if you would, a little, little tab. And that way there you can sort of say, uh, well, for the property information, maybe this one you only want as read only, but if they want to edit meter information, so maybe you have someone specifically dedicated at your company to entering meter information, you don't want them editing the property ground floor area, you don't want them editing uh, the number of workers, you'd give them only read only access to the property information, but meter, then they can maybe add, uh, they'll have full access into adding information there. You can also have the option here to share forward. So say uh, you want to give the person that you're giving uh, the sharing access to the opportunity to share this building with other people. You can toggle that as yes and no. Could be useful if you are maybe not going to be using that account anymore, not going to be associating that building to your account anymore. So, And once you're done, don't forget to apply selections. Uh, once you have someone that you've shared a property with, you can manage and remove their uh, access in the sharing tab. So you, this tab here will have been filled out. And from there, you can view what their permissions were. You can change it. If you don't want them to have the same access anymore, you can remove it. Uh, you can, again, so you have different edit, uh, different, you can see what it was to view. You can edit it or you can remove it or you can share it with another contact. And that's uh, that's sharing <laughs> property tabs. If there's any questions, please don't hesitate to stop me. We do have a little bit more time. I'm going to try to speed things up so we have a little bit of time left for the Q&A. There's not too much left. So um, one part of Energy Star that's very useful is setting your baseline and just sort of setting what, are your, what is your goal, what is your target, and just going a little bit back to benchmarking, why do you want to do that? Well, when you set your targets, like you're sort of at this stage at the moment where you're setting, okay, well, I want my building to have a very a lower energy use intensity. I'm going to, and like, how am I going to do that? Well, maybe you're, that's where you're starting to create your action plan. You're going to maybe install lead lighting. You want to see what the impact is of all these energy efficiency measures that you're forced to create, not forced, but like that you want to create there and like what that you want to implement. And that way there, you can sort of see what the, the process is and you can like, Benchmarking will let you see if your goals are being met. Did that installation of those LED lights uh, really make a big difference or not? Why not, if not? And then you can sort of go for achievements or go for recognition, certifications, if it did work. So that's where benchmarking can be very useful. So you have an option to set baselines, targets, goals, uh, whatever you wish. You can do it in a bulk mode. So this is uh, establish a baseline and target for each property and for all the prop like for all the properties all at once. So maybe you want all your all your buildings or office buildings. You want all of them to have an energy use intensity of 75 and over. So you can get an Energy Star uh, Portfolio Manager score above 75. Oh, sorry, yeah. Um, if not, you can go building by building and set different baselines for each property. Maybe if you have a multi-use building versus an office building, you don't want them to have the same goals. So we'll start off with editing um, bulk properties all at once. To get to this page, you have to go to the home page, the My Portfolio page, and then there's the Manage Portfolio that we have been using quite a bit this uh, presentation. In the Upload or Update, this is the one that we had Upload or Updated Properties, Downloading that I will get to that, but you have the bottom parts here, which you can set a portfolio baseline and or target and you click on that and it'll open up a new section. In the section, this is setting a baseline target for all your properties all at once. So I will just give a very quick example. Again, my portfolio, 
this is the area of the page that I was talking about. You can set the portfolio baseline and our target. All this will set a baseline or target for all the buildings that you have listed here. So just keep that in mind. If you don't want to do a bulk upload, maybe not the best idea to go in there. But if you do want to do a bulk change, this is uh, great. One second. Having issues with my. When you're setting um, your baseline for your properties, you need to, again, have at least 12 months of calendar data before you can even start to set a baseline. This is what this little information thing is here. And once you've entered 12 months worth of data, you can sort of select what baseline year you want to use. So you would end, you'd always use the year and dates in that case. So if I want to see my target, my baseline for 2019, or like I say, 2020 three, then I would have to enter all my data for 2023 and I would set my baseline year as December 31st, 2023. You do have an option to not select a custom baseline, but you can use a portfolio manager automatic um, baseline. You can use, sorry, I'm having issues with my computer showing these little pop-ups. So if I seem a bit distracted, it's, uh, it's a bit, my computer's fell off. <laughs> Uh, the portfolio manager can set an automatic baseline. This will just use the earliest 12 month period. So if you want your baseline to be 2019, but you've uploaded dates up to 2023 and you select portfolio manager automatically set your baselines, it's gonna use the 2023 year as your baseline. Um, you can also have this uh, for, and like this will vary per end use. So we have our energy tab, we have our water tab and we have our waste tab. You can maybe do a bulk upload, a bulk baseline for all your buildings for the water, but maybe your energy, you want to keep it different for each building uh, because you have different energy consumptions. So that way you can maybe click on leave property specific baselines as currently set, or, um, and then you can edit the other ones as needed. Okay. In this page, there's uh, right underneath that section, there's also the energy target section and you can sort of set what your target is. Uh, you can define it. There's three different types of targets that you can define. You can define the energy star score as your target. You can say a target as a percentage better than a baseline or a percentage better than the median. So those are your three targets you can do. Uh, you do have two other options, whether you leave the target specific at as like per property. So you would have to go into each property and set your own targets, or you have no targets set at the moment. Uh, there's a little warning here. It says using this form, you're going to reset all your targets and baselines for all your buildings. So just be a little bit careful if that's not what you wanted to do. And this is an example. If I wanted to do an energy target score and like it would create a pop up here and you sort of say what target value you would have to. Uh, sorry, is this in the same thing? You would define what target value you'd want to get. So again, like, if you wanted an energy star score and energy star certification, you need a target value above 75. So maybe your target right now is 77. Afterwards, click on the save baselines and target and you all your baselines for all your properties and your targets for your, all your properties will have been updated. If you don't want to do it for all your properties, you have to go property by property. So you would have to go select your property and then you have your seven tabs that are each unique. You, we've been mostly working with summary details, energy, water and waste. Uh, you would go into the goals tab and this is where you can sort of see what your current baseline and targets are and maybe what you want it to be versus the median. Uh, so this median is like a median for the property type uh, that you've selected. So if it's an office, it's going to change versus other types. Uh, so if you want to set custom baselines and targets per building, you go into the set baseline or targets there. And on this page, you're going to have to define what dates uh, you want to set the baseline at. Again, it's going to be the last month of an available 12 month period. So if you want it for 2023, the whole year, you would have to use December 31st, 2023. Um, the drop down menu here, it will show the end date for any, like again, this drop down menu, rather than manually entering it, it'll just, you have to select what end month date works the best for you. This is if you want to do a custom baseline. So if not, Portfolio Manager will select its own baseline based on last 12 months of data. If you select the other option underneath, 
And you can select it again, your base funds for your energy, your water, and your waste, because those are your three sort of reporting, if you would. So specific targets to properties. So this is another option underneath where if you wanted to not define maybe a baseline, but the targets, well, you have the option. Again, you have three different, uh, actually we'll get into that. So you have three different energy target metrics. You can do the energy star score. And this one will say it here, like, do I want to like, you enter the score that you would like to get from one to hundred? If not, you can say the percentage better than the base mine or a target percentage better than the median. So those are your three type of targets that you can sort of aim for. And this is your current energy target. And again, if you ever haven't defined what your what your current date is, it'll use the last 12 month period. Once you've done that and it changed all the updates, you can click save baselines and target. I'll try to give you or not. And now we're getting into the custom uh, reporting templates. So these are great if you wanted to sort of share or track performance or create templates or PDFs, uh, download data and share it with others that are not using Energy Star Portfolio Manager. So maybe you have stakeholders that they don't care to log into your account, but they want to know what the change in, like, has your building increased in energy, has it decreased, are you reading or reaching your goals? This is a very useful uh, template. So again, why create the report? It's very useful for stakeholders or for tracking your improvements. Uh, you can also create these templates to download your data. So this is great if you want to back up any of your data for all your properties, or you want to track data on your own. Uh, if you have a different change of ownership and management, maybe you're going to want to download all the data, give it over to the new owners. Uh, you should always, uh, so keep in mind that whenever you generate a report, or a spreadsheet, you need to save it on your computer somewhere. It's not safe to your account. You can't come back and save it again. Uh, so just do keep that in mind. So if you want to download your entire portfolio to an Excel spreadsheet, you can do this for all your buildings and all their data. You would have to go into the download in the home page. We're going back to that Manage Portfolio tab here. And there you would have to download your entire portfolio to Excel. If you have a lot of properties, this can take quite some time. Uh, this type of report, it'll include, include all the basic property information, such as property use details, historical use information, all the meter consumption data for each property. Uh, this is all going to be in one single sort of Excel sheet, so you can really see the detailed uh, and tab breakdown use. So you're really downloading all your data into one Excel. Maybe you're going to need it, or you're going to send it off to an energy auditor later, and that's how they're going to audit it. Again, don't forget to save it on your computer. It's not. Uh... So for the custom downloads, if you want to create a custom download, not download everything all at once, uh, but just maybe certain criteria, you can do click on the custom download, uh, which is underlined underneath. Once you get there, you can sort of select, maybe you don't want to download all your properties. Maybe you just have only the office buildings that you want to download and you only have two office buildings. Will you select the properties that you need? After that, you can sort of decide which kind of information you want to download. Maybe you don't care so much about the use details and the uses. You're more interested in downloading meter data. Uh, and then the rest you can leave unchecked or checked, depending what you want. There is a little bit of a limit of how many rows of data you can download. It's up to 500,000 rows. It's quite a lot. I don't think you're ever going to reach it. But if you do, uh, double check the amount of data that maybe has been downloaded. If you've been using Energy Star for years, click Submit. And then you can download a custom download rather than downloading your whole portfolio. If you want to download information for specific properties and not do bulk and very specific information, you can go into either the energy tab, the water tab, or the waste and material tab. So this is where you're entering sort of your building data. And from there, you can sort of download your data by calendar month, or as you can also download the graphic if you wanted. Uh, you can download also annual totals by meters. So th these are just little extra reports that you can sort of download if you're going to do an analysis outside of uh, outside of Energy Star Portfolio Manager. If you want to just download the whole property information without selecting certain things or selecting certain meters or just like maybe just your water, you can go into the summary tab of your building and go click on the download property to Excel. So it's so download all the information of the property. Now, you can also create custom reports. So say you're not so interested in downloading Excels uh, or you're 
interested in creating a specific type of Excel, you can also create this in the reporting tab. You can create uh, PDFs uh, in the reporting tab. So your four tabs at the very top, this is again, the one that we've been using the most. Sharing is for when you wanna share information and properties with contacts. Reporting is where you'll be able to download the reports. Uh, so you can sort of pre-select things that already exist. Uh, you can see what reports that have already been created. Uh, if you haven't created anything, this section will be empty. So don't be surprised if you go into the reporting tab and you see nothing there. You can create custom reports. Uh, you also have options for like these kind of Energy Star specific documents and you can download these documents. Uh, they're all PDFs. And what is the most interesting for most people is creating a custom template to sort of download what they want uh, specifically. That isn't maybe created by an Energy Star template. So in the custom reports, I'm going to dive into that a little bit. You can go click on custom reports and then create a new template. This will be able to allow you to sort of just like generate a custom PDF template. You can either share this template with your contacts. Uh, you can request data from other people as well. So say you want data from a building that you're sharing with a contact, you can request that maybe from one of your other contacts. Um, there is a little key icon on the bottom here. This is just sort of to tell you what it means, like what those little logos were over here. So you have what's like, oh, if it's just this local here, that means it's just an energy star type of report. If not, you can have a custom report. You can see the status of your reports, um, such as if it's being processed, is it generated, and all that kind of. It, these are just information tools for you. So to create a custom report template, you will have clicked on create a new template over here, and it's going to pop up a new tab. Um, so you just have to also set an appropriate name for your template. If you just write template test one, might not be useful for you later on. You might not know what's being downloaded later on. So maybe do a custom thing uh, that's related like a water meter or tracking or something like that that's related to what you're trying to create. You have to select the time frame. Uh, so you have different options in the time frame. It's going to be a little drop down menu and the different time frame options are listed here. So these time frames are always listed for a 12 month period. Again, that's always important. You need 12 months of data and energy star to get any kind of reporting template. And you can choose um, what kind of, if you wanted to download the energy or the water or the waste, because those are the three things that you can uh, track in energy star. Afterwards, you can choose if you want to do it for all your properties or just one specific property and sort of really customize what kind of templates you want to download. You can also select, and this is where it becomes very interesting, this select information and metrics is very useful because you have up to 1,600 and something metrics that you can select. Uh, if anything, you're, you're allowed a maximum of 50 per template, but we'll get into that in, in one second. Afterwards, once you want, if you want to create this report template, all you have to do is click on save templates once you've defined what metrics you wanted. Uh, going a little bit more into the metrics, like I said, we have 1,680 different metrics that you can select from. So if you want very specific information of the cost performance or your water performance, you have all these different tabs that you can go into. You have four um, base metrics that you cannot change. So you always have the property ID, the parent property name, ID, portfolio manager ID, and all these IDs here. So these four you cannot change. However, you have a maximum of 50 that you can select. So you can go into like the data accuracy or into your energy fuel use by source and sort of select what you would want. And you can also drag and drop these values here. So if you want to see certain values first and then, then other ones after, you can really customize what kind of a report uh, you would like. Um, explains that. I can always show that, but I also don't want to take up too much time either. Once you've generated a new report, uh, you can have different types of sort of actions that you can do. You can either edit the template, you can share it, you can request data using, so you can make a template and then request data from a building if you wanted, or you can delete the template. Um, and then once the once the uh, template has been generated, you can then download 
what your requests have been either into a PDF, into an Excel. Uh, so you have different types of type of options here. When, if you want to share with someone your custom reporting template, you already would have had to um, have connected with them on the contact. So keep in mind that sharing contacts page, uh, they can, you can share a template with someone. They can edit the template as much as they want. It won't impact your template. Uh, same thing, if you decide to edit your template after you've shared it, it and they've already downloaded it and added the template to their uh, sort of reporting, then it won't impact their template. So there's no communication between the two templates, even with if it is shared. So just do keep that in mind. So I went a little bit fast at the end there, but uh, we do have a little bit of time and I can take a little bit more time to answer any questions if no one's rushed for lunch. <laughs> uh, and I guess I will let Annabelle just wrap up the little presentation here at the end there for Absolutely, uh, Megan, thank you so much. So before we cover these two questions, I wanted to quickly um, let everybody know about the tools and resources that are available uh, through the Save on Energy program. Uh, so you've got some useful links on the slide, which I'm also going to put here in the chat. Uh, so you can fill out our form for coaching on managing your energy data. You can also uh, sign up for our monthly bulletin for news and updates. Uh, you can view our live training calendar to register for upcoming uh, no-cost sessions. And uh, we also invite you to visit the Save on Energy training and support page uh, to access the past presentations, uh, recordings, and other tools and uh, resources. So I'm just going to drop this in the chat right here. And um, before we go to the last slides, I just want to go back to the Q&A here for you, Megan. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got one question here that was saying, can we use the Energy Star Portfolio Manager as our standard utility monitoring and tracking, similarly to Energy Cap or any other third party softwares? Yes, a hundred percent. Like it's very useful. I, I don't. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't know. I haven't used Energy Cap before, but no, you can use Energy Star as your utility monitoring and tracking. It's there for that, and there's more tools in there that are even there to help you sort of benchmark and see, hey, is is what I'm using and consuming as a building too high, like versus the rest of the office buildings in Canada? You could. It's super useful for that. So yes, great. And for the, yeah, the, I see there's another person asking for a link. I think we'll send it to you guys afterwards. So you guys will have access to all the presentation, all the slides. You can take the time to go through it on your own. Um, Absolutely. Uh, and then I see one last question here. Um, is ESPM, does ESPM have the feature to upload utility meter bills from all utility providers throughout Canada? That is a very good question. There is that feature that is the web services. Let me try to get that up for you guys. Uh, I'm going to tell you that it depends on your provider right now. So in Quebec, uh, Energie and Hydro-Quebec both have that option already. If you're a utility company, you're going to have to check with them if they do uh, sharing like that. You would have to go into sharing and you say share with your utility or service provider for exchanging data. So I know New Brunswick, they share utilities. I know in Quebec, we share utilities, but that's because we have one utility provider. I think um, in Ontario, it's still in process because you have something like 60 utility providers, which is insanely high. Uh, it's, it's super high. So starting November, I believe that is where they are trying to get this sort of service exchange. So you wouldn't have to manually upload your bills. But... Uh, when they keep an eye on that, keep an eye on the IESO sites, uh, they probably will be posting about it. Uh, I'm assuming most of you are in Ontario because I'm giving this presentation as part of the IESO, but if you aren't for whatever reason, you can double check with your utility providers, see if they do Energy Star Portfolio Managing Sharing, maybe go on their website. Like I know on Hydro Quebec, you can go on their website, they'll explain how to start sharing uh, with them in specific. Uh, but this is where you would like start that sharing process. Process you go into sharing and then share with your utility or service provider, if that makes sense. Great. Uh, do we have any other questions coming in? Maybe we've got an extra minute or two here. Uh, I see another one that just came in. Uh, Megan, does it have automatic GHG emission conversions uh, in ESPM based yep. on multiple territories? 
Yes. So in the states and in Canada, it will it's it will just assume per province it below an estimated GHG emission per province. I understand there's 60 different providers in Ontario, so technically it would vary per provider. But they sort of normalized it per province. So yes, they depending where you've put your building um, location, that will uh, impact your GHG emissions in ESPM. And you can download that information. Just look up GHG emissions, uh, ESPM. They have a little report. Let me can even get it started. You know there uh, that you can read a little bit more about that. And this is like, it's the first thing. They just look at GHG emissions, ESPM, and they're going to have a little bit of a, a PDF where you can read a little bit more about, oh, where is, like, this is, for example, these are the different areas of the United States uh, where they have different emissions. But in Canada, we have, it varies more per province. Let me try to find, I think I already had opened this page and was a bit too far. If there's no other question, I, I'll just continue with this one. But if there is another question, I can do a pause there. I assume there's another question. <laughs> One second, so I can get into the Canada. So Canada will vary again. It says by province what your emissions are, and it'll also vary per versus what kind of fuel you're using. So the natural gas really does vary by province. If not, they have like one standard fuel type for all uh, emissions of propane. Uh, and here's your different emission factors for natural gas per province. Uh, so you can sort of get an idea of like how it will impact it. And this is automatically calculated. You don't have to do any calculations, just you enter your location and it's gonna calculate your GHG emissions for you. And Lovely. this this database uh, will update automatically, right? Year, year over year, these conversion factors will keep on changing. So yeah. it will be updating automatically. Yeah, say so, uh, Energy Star decides to update their their emission factors. Maybe they update it yearly or uh, every three years. Then they will update it automatically. You have again nothing to do. It'll automatically be updated as it includes. Great, thank you. No problem. Great, uh, Megan. Thank you so much, uh, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, logging in and attending this webinar. Uh, that's all the time that we have for today. Uh, if you do have any other question about today's session or um, or about the resources that are provided, uh, feel free to contact us at training and support at ISO.ca, which I'm adding to the chat right here. Uh, you are also invited to scan the QR code that you see on the screen to sign up for Save on Energy's quarterly business newsletters uh, to get more insight on the latest programs and resources. Uh, and you uh, can also follow us on social media uh, through the handles that you see on the screen here. So thanks, everybody. It's been a pleasure. Megan, thank you so much uh, for this very insightful presentation. And I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you all. I had a great time presenting. Please uh, don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. <laughs>